Born in Hasselt, Belgium in 1997, it wasn't long before Max Verstappen was on the racetrack, and by 2003, he was karting on a regular basis in Genk, Belgium. In 2005, he competed in his first championship, the Belgium Championship Mini, winning all 21 races. Verstappen had won nearly everything karting had to offer by 2013, with his last karting triumph being the World KZ Championship. His single-seater debut came in the inaugural Florida Winter Series, but he was quickly signed by Van Amersfoort to complete in the FIA Formula 3 European Championship. Verstappen took the F3 Championship by storm at the age of 16, winning his sixth race before going on to win an incredible six consecutive races in the series, finishing third overall. During that season, Red Bull made headlines by announcing his launch into Formula 1. While pundits and ex-drivers were outraged by Red Bull's plans to put someone so young in a racing car, the FIA rushed to rewrite the rules to prevent it from happening again. It wouldn't be the first time that the Dutchman's antics would trigger a change in the regulations. The FIA issued the Search for Starpen rule by raising F1's age limit to 18 from 2015 onwards. It would mean that Verstappen would remain F1's youngest driver for the foreseeable future. Nevertheless, Verstappen spoke to his critics with the wisdom and presence of someone twice his age. At the end, the age is just a number, and it's on the track where you have to show. I think driving-wise, it shouldn't be a problem. It's more everything around it. What is the most important is that you have to be fast on the track. In 2015, Max made history, becoming the youngest F1 driver in history at the age of 17, too young to even hold a regular driving license in his home country. Ever since I was 7 years old, Formula 1 has been my career goal, so this opportunity is truly a dream come true. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Helmut Marko and Red Bull for all their trust and giving me the chance to make my Formula 1 debut in 2015 with Scuderia Toro Rosso. With the return of the Verstappen name to Formula 1, I hope we can relive old memories and I'm hoping to see many fans at all the Grand Prix circuits. During the media frenzy that followed the reveal, Toro Rosso team principal Franz Tost threw his full support behind the youngster. We are happy to welcome Max into the Toro Rosso family. We consider Max to be one of the most skilled young drivers of the new generation, and we believe he has the necessary maturity and mental strength to take on this challenge successfully. People were aware of Max's existence at the time. His life and career had been followed because he was the son of Formula 1 driver Jos Verstappen, who made the Formula 1 podium twice with Benetton in 1994, alongside Michael Schumacher. On September 30th, 1997, his birth was announced on his father's website, with one quote standing out. If Max has inherited the racing talents of both his parents, a new F1 driver for the year 2020 has been born today. It turns out that they were overly pessimistic about the time frame. Verstappen impressed from the start with Toro Rosso, finishing in the points on a regular basis and making more passes than any other driver, a swashbuckling style that only added to his already large fan base. At the end of the season, Verstappen received three awards at the FIA prize-giving ceremony for Rookie of the Year, Personality of the Year, and Action of the Year for his breathtaking overtake on Philippe Nasser on the outside of the Blanchemont corner at the Belgian Grand Prix. Only four rounds into his second season at Toro Rosso, Red Bull pulled another surprise by promoting him to the senior team for the Spanish Grand Prix, replacing Daniel Kvyat. On a day of stunning drama at Barcelona's Circuit de Catalunya, the Dutchman thrust into a prize to Red Bull seat just one week earlier, became F1's youngest race victor, driving a front-running car for the first time and barely six months after his 18th birthday. In just over two years, he had gone from karting to F1 victory. During the podium ceremony's reign of confetti and champagne, Max's father, almost in tears, expressed the incredible nature of this victory. I never expected it to happen the way it did. I knew when he was young when he was working to arrive in Formula 1, but to win in his second year is incredible. Of course, we had some luck and the strategy worked out. But Max knew what he had to do. He knows how to race. For his age, he is doing an incredible job, and I'm glad he is here with Red Bull. When Christian Horner was asked if he could describe how he felt, he responded with the same sentiments, praising the youngster's ability and talent. We are as much in shock as anyone else. We knew there was a chance when the Mercedes went off on the first lap. But for Max to do what he has done today is unbelievable performance. I mean, at the age of 18, he can't even drink the champagne. Verstappen had risen to the top of Formula 1 overnight, a new contender that the likes of Lewis Hamilton, 
Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen had to contend with. The Dutchman reintroduced a more aggressive racing style and quickly clashed with some of his rivals, particularly Raikkonen, following incidents in Hungary and Belgium. In Austin, the FIA issued a rule clarification, cracking down on the dreaded moving under braking, which Verstappen was found guilty of. Ironically, Red Bull benefited from the second Verstappen rule when Sebastian Vettel was penalized in Mexico for his defensive actions against Ricardo. But that second Verstappen rule was short lived, as the FIA relaxed the rules again ahead of the 2017 season in an effort to give drivers more freedom on the track and relieve pressure on its stewards. Verstappen made a few mistakes in his early career, but dismissing his driving tactics as youthful exuberance would have been a mistake. Verstappen appeared to have taken a page from the late Ayrton Senna's book, who was known for his aggressive racing style. But the following seasons were less straightforward. Rather than developing naturally in a junior category or a midfield team, Verstappen grew up in the spotlight, competing against Mercedes and Ferrari with Red Bull machinery that was less competitive and more unreliable than he deserved. Verstappen made daring moves and delivered standout performances, such as his historic race at the 2016 Brazilian GP, which drew comparisons to the sport's greats. Aside from his star performances, however, Max had irritated rivals with some of his actions during these formative years, as he stumbled into collisions, made mistakes, and appeared unwilling to compromise. In 2018, it reached rock bottom. Verstappen was hampered by mistakes in each of the first six races, including a high-speed collision with teammate Daniel Ricciardo in Azerbaijan and a costly practice crash in Monaco, where Red Bull had easily the fastest package. Verstappen was forced to start last, while teammate Ricciardo dominated. Red Bull, which had lavished attention on Verstappen, publicly urged him to get a grip. He needs to learn from it and stop making these errors, said team boss Christian Horner after Monaco. Max has an abundance of talent and has had some harsh lessons. Red Bull, however, remained confident in Verstappen's abilities. They were aware that he would make mistakes but were sure that he would emerge stronger and more formidable, having learned from his youthful impatience and inexperience. Verstappen gradually emerged as Red Bull's team leader after Ricardo's departure at the end of 2018. He began to apply his pure speed with a more mature approach, and it didn't take long for his talent to truly emerge. Wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, mishaps, squabbles, and turning tables. The 2021 championship battle between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton will be remembered as one of the sport's all-time greats. From the get-go, Red Bull appeared to benefit from rule changes designed to reduce rear downforce, as the RB16B was clearly the quickest car in Bahrain testing and then on pole for the season opener at the same circuit. Verstappen battled Hamilton for the win, setting the tone for the season. The 2021 championship battle didn't lack in controversy, with the two rivals trading blow after blow as Formula One traveled the globe. There were collisions in Monza, Silverstone, and a heated wheel-to-wheel -wheel scrap in Saudi Arabia. Despite everything that has been done, all of the controversy that has occurred throughout the season and all of the fierce battles, Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton's gripping title duel came down to a winner takes showdown under the floodlights of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix's Yas Marina circuit. With title contenders tied on points at the finale for the first time since 1974, Verstappen took a brilliant pole, but Hamilton was ahead by the race's first turn. And one moment of wheel-to-wheel -wheel drama later around the opening lap aside, the Mercedes driver appeared to be firmly on course for the win that would see him become F1's first eight-time champion. But then there was the lap 53 safety car and the final lap shootout for the championship, with Mercedes fuming over over the way the safety car period ended, with only the lapped cars between Hamilton and Verstappen allowed to unlap themselves and the race restarted at the end of that very same lap, the Red Bull on fresh tires overtook Hamilton into Turn 5 and Verstappen, age 24, was crowned Formula 1's 34th world champion. A book could be written about the 2021 title fight and will undoubtedly go down in history in the coming decades, just as seasons involving Hunt and Lauder, Prost and Senna, and Heikkinen and Schumacher are still remembered. The aggressive intensity of the fight between Lewis and Max Verstappen was what made it so memorable. With the possible exception of Lewis's race in Monaco, they were literally at each other's throats throughout. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about what followed. Going into 2022, it quickly became clear that Mercedes were out of the picture, and a repeat of the thrilling duel would have to wait at least another season. It was then Ferrari who emerged as a main contender for the charging bull that was Max Verstappen. And yes, at first, the season appeared to have a modicum of intrigue. Red Bull's inability to get on top of their reliability issues, coupled with Ferrari's early 
Ducati's season form meant that Ferrari superstar Charles Leclerc would take a big lead. But as you all know, it wouldn't last long, with both Verstappen and Red Bull bringing their A-game and showing blistering race pace. It was in Singapore that Max Verstappen had his first chance of mathematically securing his second driver's title. But a miscalculation from Red Bull in qualifying and mistakes from the Dutchman would mean he would have to wait until the next race in Japan. Coming to Suzuka, Verstappen's criteria were clear. He would have to win the race with the fastest points, and the title would be his. The race began in torrential rain and was red flagged on lap 2, after Ferrari driver Carlos Sainz lost control entering the first lap's hairpin and aquaplaned into the barriers. Only 28 laps were completed before the race was called off due to exceeding the 3 hour time limit, with Verstappen claiming his 12th victory of the season. Leclerc finished second on track, but was penalized 5 seconds for cutting the final cha chain or defending from Perez in third, dropping him behind the Mexican. And the rest, as they say, is history. Aside from the point allocation debate, Verstappen has now secured his second championship title, though in less dramatic circumstances than his first. So where does the Dutchman go from here? Well, with Red Bull likely to finish the season with the strongest car, the outlook for 2023 is very positive. Combine that with Verstappen's form being as good as it's ever been, and his competitors demonstrating just how frail they are, and it's beginning to look like Red Bull is looking forward to many years of dominance, possibly returning us to the former glory they demonstrated with Sebastian Vettel all those years ago. The 2022 title triumph no doubt silenced Verstappen's detractors. As Hall of Fame F1 journalist David Tremaine put it best, in the RB18, Max has had the equipment to display a very different side to his skill set. He has looked sleek, cunning, incredibly fast, and very highly polished, like a man who has embraced his destiny and been wholly comfortable realizing it because, in terms of self-confidence, machinery, and other factors, such as the differing levels of other drivers' competitive packages, he found all of the planets aligning for him. Yes, there were a couple of uncharacteristic spins in Spain and Hungary, but predictably, he recovered almost instantly from them where a lesser men might not have, and they barely delayed him, though he won in Spain thanks to the compliance of teammate Sergio Perez. But otherwise, he has hardly made an error, and he has certainly not needed to get his elbows out the way that he did so often in 2021. He has slipped seamlessly into his new status as a pace setter the man. One has to be honest and accept that. For many fans across the globe, there will always be hair on the cake of Max's 2021 title success because of the extraordinary circumstances in which it was won. Not that Max cared about that. But this time around, in what will surely be just another step in a slew of title successes to come, there can be absolutely no questioning the fundamental elegance and justice of a second title won in a manner reflective of the very best the sport has witnessed since 1950.